And now, you're tuned in to RBLR, the home of Tampa Bay's Reveler Sports. Hello, everyone out there in Tampa Bay and beyond. This is James Knowles coming at you for the Rowdies portion of the RBLR Sports Podcast. As per usual, I am here with my co-host, Carlos Arueda. Carlos, how are you doing on this Tuesday evening? James, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's been a productive day. Um, nice day out. It's pretty chilly, but in like a good way. Um, not like too cold, not too hot. Um, great day. Um, yeah, I mean, been a solid weekend. Um, you know, I'll, I'll save the rowdies talk for a second. But yeah, generally just a good weekend. Uh, good day so far. Um, sun shining. Can't ask for much more than that. Got some bubble tea earlier today for the first time in a while. It was pretty good. Um, it was like a caramel milk tea. Solid. Anyway, uh, James, more importantly, how are you doing? What's going on in your life? Yeah, it's a little chillier actually in the Tampa Bay area, oddly enough, because we were already getting into the 90s. But um, we will see how that impacts the players' training this week because while there aren't any games – uh, that we are previewing for the usual Saturday nights. There is a game Sunday, and then there is a game Wednesday, and then there is a game the next Saturday. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, we've got a lot to uh, you know, a lot to cover coming up here. Now, Carlos, you and I are only going to be doing the Charleston review and the San Diego preview. But as I said, there will be a lot more content coming out this week, and in the middle of that. Uh, Carlos, you and I have a, an interview coming up in this episode with Lucky M. Kosana. That is something that we did not put out there just yet yep. because uh, we wanted to keep it a little bit of a secret, keep it hush-hush. And uh, that is our big surprise for tonight. We have Lucky M. Kosana on the podcast, and uh, he's going to be here in a little bit. So I'm excited for that because he's an awesome guy. Super I mean, like, generally, you know, the fact that he's a soccer player is, is part of it for sure. But he is generally an awesome guy. I know he does a lot of charity work and he, you know, really values where he comes from and all that kind of stuff. So yep. we're going to get into that a little bit. Um, but, you know, we'll see how the interview goes when we get there. In the meantime, Carlos, we do have stuff to go over here. So let's uh, let's let's get into it, I guess. So on Aaron Gian's 100th appearance for the Tampa Bay Rowdies in the league, I should say his 100th league appearance for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Uh, the team lost in heartbreaking fashion to Charleston Battery. So uh, none of us gets any points in the RBLR Cup standings, which is obviously pretty unfortunate. But we do have another chance coming up here with the game away to San Diego. That is what we, we, we will be previewing, and it is on this Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Keep that in mind. It is not Friday. It is not Saturday. It is Sunday in California. Um, so yeah, let's, let's pretty much get into it here before that. Just want to say, of course, please like, and subscribe to us on YouTube and all other major podcast platforms, as well as social media. We are at RBLR sports on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Now, Carlos, please get us started on the recap that we have been, I guess, putting off here for a little bit because it's not the best topic, but we got to do it right. I, listen, it was better than the last Charleston game. The bar was low, but slight improvement. Uh, Sparrow started in goal. Jordan Doherty, Kleeman, Guillen made up that back line. Kleeman, again, getting the start over uh, Forrest Lasso for the second straight game. Uh, interesting note there. Uh, Connor Antley, Lewis Hilton, Ariel Martinez, Jan Ecker, and Sebastian Dalgard kind of made up that midfield uh, unit with Martinez obviously kind of uh, playing more of an attacking mid kind of role. Um, yeah, rounding it out, you had Cal Jennings and Felix Schroeder. Uh, who Schroeder getting another start um, for this club uh, over JJ Williams. Um, interestingly, um, getting the start again against uh, Charleston. Uh, first half wasn't too bad, James. Again, not there wasn't much going for us. Um, the battery scored a really stupid own goal, and we were up one nothing by the end of the half. Um, that was really nice. Uh, the, I, the wind was a factor of this game. Um, you could see the camera shaking a lot. Um, you could see the ball moving a bit more than usual. Um, and it was off of a uh, really, really silly pass backwards from, I believe it was Leyland Archer, um, who passed that back towards uh, Muse and goal. Um, and Muse uh, did a very poor job of controlling that ball, bounced right behind him into the back of the net. Uh, one of the goofiest goals you'll see all year. Um, think, but it happens. 
possibly the one. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't, I mean, it, it really wasn't even too much of the wind on that play. I think, you know, it was a moment where Muse just kind of lost focus for a half second. And next thing you know, the ball's behind him in the back of the net. Um, highly unfortunate. Uh, hospital pass from Leland Archer as well. Very bouncy in the wind. Um, unfortunate error for him, but great for us. I mean, obviously, we were at 1 nothing at the end of the half. Next thing you know, uh, battery tied it pretty quickly, um, pretty easily too, to be honest. I, I think in the first half we were getting pretty on, uh, well, pretty fortunate. Um, I believe Charleston hit the post once and they were creating a lot more dangerous opportunities than we were. Uh, and eventually that culminated in one goal uh, to tie the game early, early on in the second half, um, 50th minute, five minutes into the half. And as we all recall um, in very frustrating fashion, um, a very silly way to lose is uh, Williams gets his second goal of the night in the 94th minute um, off of just a really silly counterattack where Kleeman comes up way too far. Um, I don't know what he was thinking. Uh, bites on that bait, um, and Williams is off to the races right behind him. Um, yeah. Sparrow forced to come out and try and make a crazy save in the midfield practically. Um, doesn't work out for him. And the Charleston battery win two to one off of a 94th minute winner highly unfortunate um maybe deserved for charleston probably deserved created a lot more opportunities than we did uh, more dangerous opportunities uh yeah and that's how aaron guillen's 100th appearance wrapped up uh for the rowdies john ecker's 99th as well uh of note so james lots to talk about there <clears throat> again marginal improvement from that three nothing loss in charleston um You've noted it down as a game of two halves. Um, let's just dive into that. What was that difference in the first and second half? How did the first half go that, again, we end up at halftime with a one nothing lead that maybe, maybe not deserved? Uh, own goal, very silly own goal. Um, what kind of happened in that first half that gave us the lead and why did that evaporate so quickly in the second half? Yeah, so... Personally, uh, if I'm giving my analysis, as it were, uh, for the first half, I would kind of just take our goal out of it entirely because that's that's a fluke like you're pretty much never going to see. Um, I, I was I, I did not expect that, like, yeah. you know, watching the play develop, I mean, and um, it, w it went in and I was like, really? Did that just happen? But um, yeah, so let's kind of move past that and see how the game went outside of it because it really didn't even come from like the Rowdies applying a lot of pressure, honestly. It was just a weird pass and it was a bad control. And um, yeah, you're, like I said, you're probably not going to see very many of those over the course of watching soccer for the rest of your life. So um, looking at everything else where we might get some actual stuff to glean, uh, Charleston did look pretty good. You know, they are uh, already seemingly one of the better teams in the USL this year. And I think that that really comes down to a couple of individual players doing extremely well, those being Augie Williams and uh, three very tricky dribblers, Behind him, Tristan Traeger, Nick Markanich, and Fidel Baraja. So we're going to hear those names a lot this episode, unfortunately. But um, I think that the first half actually was pretty good for the Rowdies. Now, I do want to caveat this and say that I think that the Rowdies were playing very sharp. Um, but I don't think that, unfortunately, that was really turning into a lot of offensive output for us. So right. um, to break it down a little bit, we were really trying to go down the right side, it seemed to me. And uh, I saw that we were also very much trying to build out of the back. We were not trying to play very many long balls. Uh, if they were long balls, they were on the ground. They weren't, you know, over the top for somebody to try and bring down with their head, get on, uh, you know, the second chance when uh, the ball gets coughed yeah. up, that kind of thing. We didn't see a lot of that. So the Rowdies really did want to try to maintain possession, really didn't want to try to build. And Charleston were doing a lot to press us, but they actually didn't have too many chances to develop because of that. In the first half, I noted that the Rowdies were extremely sharp with the ball and they were extremely accurate. In fact, our passing was very nice. 
Uh, we had, uh, by the end of the first half, my best players are, for the game were Connor Antley, Lewis Hilton, and Jan Ekra. Um, I saw them all combining extremely well on the right side. And Ariel Martinez, a player that I've highlighted a couple times over these past episodes, I think that he's playing extremely well from the start. I don't think that this was his best game of the ones that he started, but he was definitely involved in all of these plays, and he was definitely involved in facilitating. So he would kind of be, uh, you know, part of the attack, but then he drop back and try and facilitate the possession as well. So um, I really liked what he's doing. And um, like I said, I didn't think he was at his sharpest of the games in this one, but at the same time, uh, he was doing very well still to make sure everything happened uh, with us carrying the ball forward and keeping the ball on the ground and not giving it away in bad positions. There were a couple of Charleston chances, but nothing really terribly of note. I think that I, uh, one of their most one of their most important chances was actually off a free kick and you know there's only a certain amount that you can do there but i noted that uh even when sebastian dalgard had the ball we were always trying to get it back and force it over to the right so um that is the side of the field that we were favoring and uh i went and i checked the statistics for this game on fotmob which is our uh choice of statistics providers i suppose because they're free but um <laughs> uh we had over the course of the game, we had one cross completed for 17%. <laughs> and if you do the little math there, uh, that means that we had roughly six crosses for the whole game. Now, uh, I did note in the first half that the Rowdies were not really doing a lot of pressing, even on our goal. Like I said, I didn't think that that was like very high pressure. Uh, there was still a lot of room in between Leland Archer and Cal Jennings when he made that ridiculous back pass. So if you're going to take the press out of the game, and you're really going to try to create chances with the ball itself and not without the ball, then, you know, our next thing as Rowdy's fans, we're probably going to see them do a lot of crosses. But if you only get six across the whole game, um, or, yeah, six total and only one completed, obviously both of those numbers are too low. You need more completed, and you need more overall. So um, that was my biggest takeaway. I thought that we looked really good in the first half, except the way we weren't creating. And then, obviously... Uh, in the second half, it kind of all went to hell in a handbasket. But um, I will note right before we get to their goal that in the 48th minute, just right after halftime, uh, we created a we created a chance here. So uh, Connor Antley with a long throw to Cal Jennings. Cal Jennings got past uh, A.J. Patterson on the back line for Charleston Battery. And uh, yeah, from there, we did get a cross off for Felix Schroeder. This was actually very similar to the goal that Felix Schroeder scored uh, in, I believe, uh, the Miami game, in the Miami game, where he was kind of just open on the back post. And yeah. this time, unfortunately, he fluffed his lines, and he did not finish it. It was uh, it was saved, and uh, yeah, it should have been a goal. But then from there, Carlos, obviously things took a turn for uh, took a turn for the worse. So why don't you walk us through the way that you saw the second half develop, let's say from the 50th minute on, because that is where the game really started to turn, obviously. And we weren't just defending well and not attacking, but we weren't even necessarily defending the best. Yeah. Uh, I think to go back to the chance you just mentioned as well, because um, I, I, that goal would have totally obviously changed the dynamic of the rest of the game. Yeah, um, in the last 40 minutes of that game. Um, uh, it was great, great field vision from Connor Antley to just quickly make that throw to Cal Jennings. Um, next thing you know, Cal Jennings off to the races. He timed that run perfectly on the throw in, which, again, by the way, started just inside our own half. So really, really interesting and super incredible play from Connor Antley to make that toss at the right time. Like a quarterback was awesome. Um, and seeing that, seeing Cal Jennings get behind that back line, and seeing Felix Schroeder streaking in from the other side of the field, um, I think most of us thought that that would end up in a goal, um, whether that's a Cal Jennings shot to the far post. Well, I, I think by that time he got kind of closing and made the right decision by making that pass. Um, but that one, that moment was so frustrating, and I think such a key moment in this game um, because it would have entirely changed the dynamic of the last 40 minutes. Um Again, as you mentioned, around the 50th minute, it kind of started going downhill pretty quickly. Um, some lackluster defending, just, I don't know, lackadaisical. Um, next thing you know, uh, Charleston is streaking down the middle 
Uh, I think it was Traeger that made a fantastic pass. Um, found Williams right behind the back line. I'm trying to remember. I, I, I took a couple screenshots to go back and reference with the quality so far. I'm trying to remember <laughs> who he gets behind. Um, I believe it was Guillen. He squeezes through Guillen and Kleeman, um, and Traeger puts the ball right on the money. Um, way too much space for him. There's a huge gap um, between Kleeman and Guillen um, that gives him that like tunnel to run through. Um, next thing you know, he's one on one with Sparrow, and Sparrow's forced to try and make a really, really difficult save. Uh, makes contact with it, but the ball ends up in the back of the net. Um, next thing you know, five minutes into the half, it's a totally different game. We're tied 1 1. Um, after generating a little bit of momentum we could in that first half, after, you know, I wouldn't even say taking advantage, after being gifted a goal, um, quite literally. Uh, it, it's unfortunate to see us just give that back so yeah. quickly, um, and that was that was again the, that, like few minutes. It's crazy in a matter of what three three minutes, like two and a half minutes, we went from should have been up to nothing to being tied one one uh, with a whole forty minutes of play. Again, you can see how that could have changed the dynamic so quickly. Um, it's unfortunate to see that play out in that way. Um, yeah, and then the rest of the half was, I, I, I felt, honestly, kind of similar to the first half, except instead of being up one nothing, we were tied 1-1, so it was more frustrating. Um, and and I, I didn't see us creating anything, which kind of locked in um, and, and not really getting through. Um, it was really, really frustrating to see Schroeder and Jennings um, grab the ball, push it upfield, and kind of be by themselves by the time they try and create something. Um, some Charleston defensive mid or Charleston back line steps up, takes it from them. Next thing you know, they're just you know, on the counterattack or um, holding the ball again. Like It felt like when we had the ball, um, anytime we had a chance of creating something, we'd just kind of give the ball back. Or, I don't know, it, it was something about the game plan that wasn't right. Um, and I, was I will interrupt you really quick, Carlos, just to say, um, in my notes I had Chris Allen as the best player overall in the game. <laughs> And uh, he and Dante Polvaro were two of the highest rated players on FOTMOB for the game overall. So I think that that goes to the point that you're making, actually. Yeah. No, and, and again, I like I jokingly referenced this several times um, when I mentioned Charleston last time around. Um, but Dante is a fantastic defensive midfielder. He can get up the field as well. I mean, he, he was his senior year, junior year, his junior year. Um, he was the Matt Herman Award winner, which is essentially the Heisman of college soccer, the best player in the country yeah. in the NCAA soccer scene. He is a fantastic player, and he's on loan from Aberdeen, you know, a great big club in Scotland for a reason. Like he's not there by chance, um, and he had a fantastic game. Uh, probably should have gotten that free kick goal. I don't know if you recall that, James. Um, I, I had that noted too. <laughs> yeah, in the in the first half, he was so so close. And I thought I, I thought it went in, like I, the ball looked like it went in from the TV broadcast. Um, so I was like both simultaneously happy for him, but like, dude, what the hell? Like that was a crazy shot. Um, sorry, tangent on Dante Bolvar, but he had a fantastic game. And him and, and like you said, Allen um, did their jobs to perfection practically. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they were probably they were pivotal in keeping us uh, kind of shut down. I mean, again, I think for the sake of being reasonable, um, it's comfortable. I, I'm comfortable in saying that we were shut out in this game, right? Um, yeah, we had we scored a goal, but even our goal was scored by uh, news technically on the score sheet. So, um, how much does that mean? Um, again, the theme of the lack of offensive production has been recurring a bit. Um, it's unfortunate, um, but again, uh, I don't want to keep saying. Uh, it's still going to take some time to gel. Um, but I think it's a product of kind of moving pieces up top and seeing what sticks still. There hasn't really been like a regular uh, you know, starting unit up top. Um, Ariel Martinez is beginning 90 minutes. He played a full 90 this game. Um, I did not expect that at all. I don't think even anybody in the locker room might have expected that, especially with J.J. Williams on the bench. Um, like, it's really interesting to see how this offense is playing out because there's so many moving parts and it's just 
not moving in the right direction, <laughs> kind of moving right. everywhere but forward. Um, so that, that highly unfortunate and, and very frustrating to watch, as uh, I'm sure you feel. Um, but yeah, and then what? I don't have to talk too much about um, that last second goal. Um, it was a moment where we felt like we could create something. Um, we, we almost did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I want to give a shout out to Charlie Dennis in particular because um, again, maybe I'm spoiling something later on in the show. But I mean, he had when he came in, he gave us that jolt of offense that we didn't have all game. Literally came in and almost scored a, a wonder goal. Um, created a couple chances single handedly. Um, so close, scoring a couple of bangers. Um, unfortunately, you couldn't get on the score sheet. And again, like you said, we had that last second opportunity um, that very easily could have been a goal. Um, but I don't know. It is what it is, right? Um, next thing you know, on the counter attack, uh, Charleston finds uh, Williams. Again, uh, I don't know what Kleeman was doing in that situation. Um, I have. Again, I took a couple screenshots just to recall the situation. Um, I think it was Guillen that was following uh, uh, Arturo Rodriguez who had the ball. Um, Guillen was kind of trying to track him down from behind, um, took the bait, and committed too much to that tackle and then missed entirely. Um, next thing you know, it's Rodriguez and, uh, or sorry, Rodriguez? Rodriguez. I don't know, I don't know why I flipped my head with a Q for a second. <laughs> um, yeah, Rodriguez pushing by himself. Uh, had the easiest pass we'll ever make in his life um, to Augustine Williams with so much space, like uh, literally. Um, I, I, again, Kleeman, I don't, I don't, I really don't know what he was doing. Like, was he trying to step up and take on Rodriguez? Like, maybe thinking uh, Williams might have been offsides. Um, but again, like there, he's in his own half. He can't be offsides. Um, he took the bait on whatever that was and and committed too much um, to that stepped up too much and Williams is going to win that foot race against, you know, this really tall clean man, um, every day of the week. So free goal. We gave them a goal, not in the same way they gave us a goal, uh, that literally, but, um, it felt like we just gave up a free opportunity. And I, I think it was Steven, uh, kind of on Twitter, uh, summarized what the right move would have been. Even if you give up, if you, even if you, you know, bite like that and overcommit to that tackle, um, why didn't anybody take a foul? Like, you're in you're in distance where like you might get a red card. You probably would get a red card, but like, Gian had an opportunity to make the right foul, at least keep the draw. Um, the next thing you know, you know, game winner. Um, like, there has to be something. Like, we we missed on on something there. Um, we took the bait, overcommitted on tackles, and we didn't take our last resort of you know just fouling uh when it's that clear that they're going to score the game winner here uh you got to do whatever you can to stop that and it's so unfortunate that that's how it ended because again like it felt like a draw type of game um another one we let get away um and again another last second goal right it's uh at least two now on the season uh, if you count that penalty from the first game yeah, I uh, actually, in my notes for um, the play on which uh, Charleston scored their second goal, the winner, I have uh, Harris to Dennis, and they lose it in the battery box. <laughs> then uh, the clearance just falls to Arturo Rodriguez. Aaron Guillen gets beat, and he gets beat by one touch, obviously lays it off for the pass. And in parentheses, Kleeman and Guillen looked at, uh, bleeping, let's say, bleeping stupid. <laughs> that that was my note for that one. Um, yeah, I, I um, you know, sometimes stuff like that is going to happen, but I think that what led up to it is kind of what's most disappointing about it. Not just because it was the 90th plus three minutes, and with that, it's almost the last play of the game. Obviously, we lose it just by doing that. But um, the Rowdies had two clear chances beforehand. There was the one where uh, Connor Antley had um, uh, another quick throw, I guess. Uh, this one was into into the back, and then he found Hilton. Hilton went on a little run because he found some space there, and he laid it off to Charlie Dennis. Charlie Dennis had that shot that you mentioned. Um, that went just wide, and uh, I, I really, I really thought that that. <sighs> 
In all honesty, I thought that that should have been a goal, but, you know, fair enough. It's obviously very hard to score. And then the other thing is that um, right before we gave up this goal, um, that's when we were actually building to try and get on, you know, another chance. So that's where I found it so so much more disappointing. Obviously, it really sucks to give up a last minute goal. It really sucks to give up a last minute goal. That means that you lose the game. Um, but to do so when we were just pushing for, you know, chances to go and actually possibly win it ourselves, that that was the real kick in the pants that I, I did not need at the end there. But <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, I thought that the second half we were a lot less accurate. I thought that we were a less sharp, a lot less sharp. Uh, compared to the first half when I was actually very impressed with the way that we were playing up until us not getting those chances. And uh, as Leo Santos, when he was on here, what he always used to say is, uh, you know, if you don't score, then the other team is going to. That's kind of, you know, the truism of sport. Like if you don't take your chances, then you're leaving it up to the other team to do that against you. And obviously that's what they did here. So, um, yeah, that's now left us in ninth on uh, five points. And uh Carlos, does this mean something for you in the grand scheme of things where, you know, um, we've talked about, you know, we want to see it for me. This is kind of like I, I'll just I'll just keep it brief because I think mm -hmm. it's pretty easy to sum up. But for me, it's, you know, just it was one step one step forward with the week in the Open Cup and then against versus uh, against the Miami. Um, that was our one step forward. And now we're, you know, two steps back. So. Um, I, I'm definitely, you know, still high on the amount of talent that we have on this club mm -hmm. roster. It's just when when is it all going to come together? Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I talked about this team a lot, and by this team, I mean Charleston um, during the off season. They looked like a really good team, and I think my kind of vision for what they could be is coming to fruition quite rapidly and much quicker than I thought it would. Same for um, me. <laughs> I, I think, again, I knew they were going to be a really good team. I didn't think it would come together this quickly in six games. Um, genuinely, and I'm not exaggerating, I genuinely think this could be the best team in the league by the end of the year. Um, like It was an insane turnaround. Um, the, the squad that they have and the chemistry they're playing with together is is incredible. And I don't know. Like It takes a lot of talent more than anything a certain type of mindset to come back and win 2-1 after giving up the goal that you've given up like that takes serious grit and to do it away to do it against the rowdies who you know knocked you out of the playoffs before a team that historically i mean historically i mean like in the last few years have been probably much better than you in terms of uh, overall success like it takes serious talent and grit to be able to do that away. So I'm not even that surprised that we lost to Charleston, really. I think they're a fantastic team. Um, it's unfortunate because I think we should be the best team in the league. I think we have the talent to be the best team in the league. But at the same time, I'm not like – I don't feel terrible by this loss because it came to such a great team, um, you know, if we lost to Miami, I would have been much more distraught because Miami's very bad right now. Um, but, like, that doesn't mean we shouldn't be winning more games. Um, we have a tough game coming up against San Diego, which I'll, we'll, we'll talk about here in a little bit after a, a couple more things. But, like, ninth place after six games, again, very early in the season, but it just shouldn't be where we are with this level of talent. Um, so, again, it, it's a matter of time. Like you can, uh, you can press the panic button if you want. It doesn't really do anything right now because there's so much game to play. Um, I think it's a little, still a little preemptive because there's so many games, and I would be panicking for like 30 more games. Um, that's just not fun. So I think there's time for this team to still gel together and not really be a you know playoff team. That's I think a given. It should be a given, but like genuinely competing for. Um, a title uh who knows maybe we got charleston again in the conference final instead of louisville this time right switch it up for once um we'll see what happens but i'm not i'm not too shocked or i i am upset about the way we lost don't get me wrong but i'm not shocked that we lost um to charleston um again six games played lots of opportunities to gain momentum 
that's a cool thing about soccer and it's a cool thing about the USL with how many games there are is that, okay, that game's done. There's another opportunity to get points in San Diego on Sunday. Um, listen, like one win and you can jump up to like fifth place from ninth place. It's still pretty early on. So it, it, it's just a matter of starting to string a couple wins together. And once that happens, like you can see some quick movement off the table. So um, I know it looks bad and it kind of is bad if you look at the table, but there's room to rapidly make up space on that table um, with just a couple of wins back to back. And once that momentum gets going, like the sky's the limit, but we just have to see that click, especially in the attack. Yeah, uh, that is where we're obviously lagging the most. Let's say if we're going to follow to your logical conclusion that we're not counting the goal that uh, the Rowdies had on their score sheet for the game against Charleston, then we have scored four goals in the league all, all year. So um, that's just obviously not good enough. We have more goals than, or sorry, more games than goals. So um, I'm, I'm not satisfied with that personally. But uh, as I said, there is talent there for sure. Now, Carlos, we have one more thing to do before we move into our interview here with Lucky and Kosana, and that is name your man of the match. Carlos, who was your man of the match for this game? Yeah, I said I spoiled it earlier, and I did. It's Charlie Dennis. I know he didn't play very long. Um, he came in kind of in the middle of the second half, but genuinely, I mean, he he gave us the like, only spark of offense I really saw us have throughout the game, and like the continued spark of offense, with the exception of um, the notable uh, – Felix Schroeder, um, almost goal created by the Antley and Jennings combo. Like it is what it is. Like it really wasn't much else after that. And Charlie Dennis created the continued spark of offense that we had late in the game. For that reason, he's my man of the match. All right. Well, uh, I would quibble with you just because he did get that really good chance, but he did not unfortunately turn it in. So. Um, I kind of went a different way. I went with somebody who I thought had a very good game, but wasn't on the field for the unfortunate parts of it, which were, I would say, the much later portions. Um, I went with Jan Ekra as my man of the match. I thought that he had a very great, a very good game in his uh, midfield connector role. I thought that he and Ariel Martinez were brilliant pieces to go alongside Connor Antley and Lewis Hilton, who, uh, you know, they did their usual stuff, obviously. And um, I think that, unfortunately, uh, when Jan Ecker came out, I don't know that we had the same amount of um, correct possession. Like, I don't know that it was all connected properly. Um, so, yeah, that's why he was my man of the match for this one. But, um, you know, I, I still see that Dennis obviously offered a good spark, even if it wasn't, um, you know, even if there wasn't the same connection. And I do wish... He did, he did create the chance partially, but I do wish he had put that in the back of the net. That obviously would have been very good for us to have got a last-minute goal. But, um, yeah, those are your men of the match for the Charleston Battery game. Now, uh, liking and subscribing to our podcast is free, but if you think you might need some new threads coming up this year, you can support our podcast even a little bit more by heading over to shop.rblrsports.com and checking out all of the designs that we have going on there. And as you can see, there is a promo code for 10% off. Uh, that promo code is C-O-Y-R and um, yeah, please do check it out. I'm sure you will find something you like. Now, Carlos, we have an awesome interview here, as promised, with our awesome guest, Lucky M. Kosana. Lucky, uh, thank you for joining us. Obviously, we are very happy to have you here and be able to talk to you about, you know, how the season has gone and things, how they're going for you. But um, let's start with the thing that we started our show with Carlos and I always like to say, how are you doing? How are things going for you right now? Thank you, James. Uh, thank you, Carlos, for having me. I uh, appreciate you guys for having me on your show. Uh, things are going well, you know, obviously, um, this season-wise, obviously, it's a rough pace uh, start to the season, but uh, we all we always know uh, what our goal is, and we're going to approach every game like uh, it's a final, so I know things are going to turn around uh, pretty well. Well, I'm sure that fans will obviously be happy to hear that you have confidence that this team can do that. I think that we all came into the season with a lot of similar confidence, and I think that we all do probably think that all of the talent that you know we expected is still there. It's just a matter of putting it all together, and I don't doubt that that is, you know, pretty close to around the corner. But um, you know, we'll just have to see how it goes. So, mm -hmm. um, 
Lucky, I wanted to start with this. Before we get into a little bit of the current events, I will uh, ask you a quick question about your Rowdy's background, and then I'll turn it over to Carlos to get us back to those current events. But yeah, my first question here is, um, I wanted to get the uh, first time that you came to the Rowdies. I believe that was back in 2013, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. Could you give us a little bit of background for how you came to join the team then? And then, like I said, we'll get back to uh, the modern day soon. Yes, uh, I was actually on loan from uh, Harrisburg City Islanders, uh, which was uh, Penn FC. Uh, so I came here for like a month. And then after that, uh, they actually uh, signed a full contract. Signed me on a full contract uh, with the Rowdies, and I, I played for uh, 2014 season. Yeah. Perfect. All right, Carlos, if you can take us then, like uh, now into, like I said, modern day and uh, where we are today. Yeah. Lucky again. Thanks for joining us. It's a great honor to have you on here. Um, lovely seeing you. Um, yeah, so, you know, obviously James mentioned that first stint you had uh, with the Rowdies back in 2013. Uh, came back in 2019. Um, you've accomplished a ton here already. I mean, I think everybody hears your name and thinks about that incredible comeback against Louisville um, in, in the conference finals that um, I'm sure nobody will ever forget. Um, so, now that you're back here, um, you're here for another season. Um, you've reached the milestones you have already. What does it mean to have another season with this team? What's kept you here, and, and why still be with the Rowdies after all this time? Well, yes, yeah, uh, colors for me. Um, it's the love of the game, mostly. You know, I still love to play. I still feel like I can. I, there's still more I can give uh, uh, to the game uh, on and off the field. And uh, obviously coming back for a second thing to the rally is, is something that you, you don't, a few players get that chance. And for me, it's, I want to make it as long as I can uh, to enjoy uh, with the fans mostly. Uh, being like really close with the fans, you know, we can throw like they can then with them. And for me, that's special uh, to have that bond with them. And uh, I just continue to do what I love every day and, and being, you know, uh, making fans happy, making people happy, and it's, it's what I, I, I love to do. That's awesome. It's good to hear. I know, um, again, it's an incredible just to have you here with us because you, you become so much to this club. Um, so it's really incredible to, to hear that. And, and it's good to hear that, um, to see what you can contribute as the season goes on. And Thank you. There's a long season still to go. I mean, I'm sure James <laughs> yeah. wants to jump in on that and ask about the yeah, well, um, let's get into that here. Um, you know, you did mention it. Uh, the Rowdies are off to a bit of a tough start, and, you know, we understand as fans that it does take a bit to gel here. Um, if there was something that you saw that, you know, the Rowdies could um, put together, what, where do you want to see the Rowdies improve the most, I think? What what would you like to see the Rowdies do that would help turn around the season? Uh, to be honest, it's still early in the season again, you know, and I, I feel like, with the squad we have, uh, there's so much depth in it that it will maybe take another game or two. But I have no doubt that as it towards the end of the season, uh, the Rowdies are going to be in the mix of things to uh, fighting for the championship. And I feel like right now it's just a matter of getting the group together, you know, uh, not panicking and uh, making sure that the fans are behind us too and trusting um, in the system or what the coaches are doing, you know, this is one of the best for the club. Uh, and, and if everyone buys into that, uh, I think the energy spread up, spreads out, you know, and uh, it obviously is tough. It's tough uh, for fans. Fans always want to win, you know, uh, and being in our position, I, I, it's understandable to whatever they want to say. But for me, I believe in this club and I know uh, at the end there's going to be a reward. Yeah, I think, um, like I said, most of us do, you know, expect that things will turn around eventually. But um, in the meantime, uh, we were also wondering, you know, and I'll turn it over to Carlos here in a second here. But, um, you know, you're looking forward to a busy week actually coming up here. We've got uh, uh, three games coming up next week. I, I suppose, you know, I, I, I technically count Sundays as part of the week that they are uh, the weekend for. But regardless, uh, you've got three games coming up in a very short period of time. So, um, you know, are you looking forward to that? How do you guys prepare for uh, such a short 
turnaround, and especially with, you know, you've got two important games in the middle of the league, but then you've got an important game also in the Open Cup. So what is that like from the player's perspective to try and get prepared for everything? Uh, that's a good question, James. I, for us, uh, and the, the coaching staff, uh, we take each game as it comes. Uh, for now, obviously, the tactical goals, uh, we're focusing on our goal on Sunday. And uh, the players know that we have a game on Wednesday, so the players that are going to go out there and do the work on Sunday, uh, those that are not going to play are uh, getting ready for Wednesday. Uh, I think our, squ our squad is capable enough of playing uh, those games, and especially having an open cup at home uh, with a team that has never been here uh, in, in a cup like this is it, it's something that's going to pump us up. Um, and and going to to the to the game against Detroit again is is somewhere that we played there once and uh, we haven't won there, so it's, it's it's a big challenge for us. Gotcha. And I'll turn it back over to you, yeah. Carlos. Yeah, like you touched on the the depth of the, of the squad here a little bit, um, which is a really interesting point. And James and I have talked about this a lot. Um, so many good players, so much good talent in this team. Um, and you mentioned how you feel. Um, that it's in a capable spot to play, you know, three games in a short period of time. Um, again, two important league games and a very important Open Cup game. Um, is is that stretch of games, like, challenging at all for you guys? It, what's the locker room feel? Does everybody feel excited? Is it kind of like a drag? Oh, my gosh, three games coming up. <laughs> um, but, I mean, that Wednesday game especially, as you can imagine, um, mm -hmm. It means so much to the fans. It means so much to the club. Last time um, we hosted a U.S. Open Cup game against an MLS squad was that 2013 season, right? Mm -hmm. Or 2014 against Seattle. Um, first time in a long time that that's happening. What does that mean to you? Do you feel like you have a chance to create you know, a bit of legacy here, even more so than you have already um, with this upcoming game on Wednesday? Uh Carlos, that's a good question again. Uh, I feel like, first of all, like uh, for the team, I, I think the boys are ready. I know the boys are ready. Uh, adversity is something that we, 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 we take pride in, especially we know what, what's coming. Uh, you know, it will be tough if we didn't know what's coming. Obviously, the traveling is going to be there, playing again on Wednesday. <clears throat> so it's up to us to like make sure we take all the recovery. Um, precautions that we need and like guys are taking care of themselves and those that are not playing are ready to play and for me just like another game to be honest I, it's a chance for me to be on the field if I'm on the field you know I try to give it my all and I, I always take it as like okay this is another chance for, where I'm in my career to enjoy football you know uh, I'm at that stage now that I, each game is like oh, I'm young again and I'm, I'm taking chances. I know uh, I'm more experienced. Uh, like I know the runs and I know the players. So for me, it's, it's a matter of enjoying it and trying to help the team. Yeah, that yeah, makes sense. Good to hear. And again, um, it, it's exciting to hear that you guys feel you're ready and up to the task um, for you know again challenging stretch of games, but um, games I know um, the entire fan base is very very excited about. So yeah, um, we're looking forward to that. Um, on that topic, Lucky, um, again, mentioned an important game. Uh, mentioned we're very early in the season. Lots of games to be played still. Um, coming off a tough loss against Charleston, but, again, plenty of season to play. Um, what do you hope to accomplish with this squad this year? And you've talked about how deep the squad is, how much talent there's on the team. Um, Neil Collins coming back for another season, a team that seemed to really gel together and put together a lot of good uh, seasons. What's, what's your end goal with this club this season? Um, and what do you hope to accomplish personally? Uh, to answer your first question, uh, our goals with the club, obviously, the USL Championship, as any other club would say, but for us more is to win our away games, uh, you know, the way we haven't won uh, before, and that will take us closer uh, to achieving our long-term goal. Uh, and also for us is that... Uh, executing chances, you know, trying like starting to gel in and starting to combine and uh, it, it's a matter of time. I think it's coming for us to just, you know, be ruthless and because we've been playing well, you know, it's we've had some good plays. Uh, it's just unfortunate uh, the result, like last game, you know, last minute. 
Mm-hmm. They score like that on them breakaway. So I feel like for us, is we have to be ruthless and take our chances as they come. And um, to answer for for me, um, to score goals, you know, to to, to score goals more uh, than I did last year, you know, and uh, to to be impactful, whatever I'm called to do, at what time I come in on the field, and to use my minutes, you know, and if it's ten, if it's twenty, if it's thirty, uh, the entire game, and try to produce uh, whatever time I have. Yeah, before I toss it back over to James, I don't want to hog up too much of the time. Um, but again, on that topic of that game against Charleston, um, I'm curious: is what's the atmosphere in the locker room look like after a game like that? And you know, it feels like it's going pretty well, having a good game. I mean, a tough loss like that happens in the last second. Um, what was the atmosphere like in the locker room? Was there a good atmosphere? You know, bounce back, plenty of season left. Or um, I'm sure it took a little bit of a toll. But what was that like right after that game? Yes, it's obviously one of those games. Is, uh, those games are ready to happen for us to lose like that, you know, and last minute like that, a tie, we can get a point at home. Uh, obviously, it was, you know, it was emotional. It touched. It was just painful to be there, and you could see the guys that, okay, we don't want to be in this situation again because it was a tough one uh, mm-hmm. to swallow. So I feel like it's something that we learn from, you know, Mm-hmm. Not to be in that situation again, and I think the guys uh, buying in into uh, whatever they were telling us. Okay, like you know, we can be losing two games in a row, or we can be losing two games uh, at home or away, or uh, whatever it is, and uh, we need to start uh, executing. Hey James, I'll toss it back over to you. We're running low on time, and I'm taking up too much time. Well, yeah, um, we just had one more question here, Lucky, and we appreciate all the time that you've given us so far, but um, we wanted to make sure that we gave you a moment to talk about the stuff that you're working on outside mm-hmm. of soccer, because obviously soccer is a big important of your life, or, or a big part of your life. It's a very important thing, but it's not everything to your life or everyone else's. You are also not only uh, a soccer player, but at this point, I believe I'm right in saying you are a published author. You are uh, an, an app. Am I allowed to say an app creator? Maybe not yes. an app engineer. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> I, we wanted to get you know the full background for everybody here who's listening so that they know exactly what's going on in your life off the pitch, too. Mm-hmm. Yes, thank you, James uh, and Carlos. Uh, well, I started um, six months ago. I started a newsletter um, just to help parents and coaches and athletes uh, uh, build that relationship so they can uh, have success on and off the field. And I write every other Thursday. Um, we have 20 newsletters now. Uh, so what I do is try to talk to the parents uh, when I coach the U11 boys and see what, what the problem is with them. And then that's how I create my topics. Uh, for example, it's like something like uh, if someone is not motivated and like how can we help them uh, to be motivated and then, okay, where does it start? It starts at home. So we have to also like help the parents uh, do those actions so the kids can learn uh, from home. So mostly what I, I'm focusing on is not just uh, for the players, but uh, helping uh, the parents as well, uh, self-development um, and to learn how coaches react to and uh, to deal with coaches and, and, and setbacks if that kids lose the game. Uh, like, like just like tips and, and, and guys to help them maneuver. Um, and now I have an app uh, that says like meditation there that for parents uh, they can do with their, with their kids uh, before games and after games. Uh, there's the newsletter there, is the audio uh, version for it too. And there's also uh, a, uh, a portal for athletes, uh, for parents and a mindset and routine portal where they can go in there if they wanna, if there's a kid that wants to prepare for a test, for example, they can, there's uh, tips on how to like study, on how to prepare for an exam, uh, like things that can help the kids not just be soccer players, but be student, uh, be student athletes as well. Um, that's, that's and awesome. uh, the book, <laughs> and the book I just wrote was, it's just because I get a lot of, uh, feedback from parents like uh, just the relationship between the coaches is is hard for some parents that 
or do I go in or do I not go in? So for me, it was a guide for them uh, to help that young athlete succeed on and off the field by giving small tips um, uh, just to maneuver uh, the, the athletes well for their kids. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's all really cool to hear that you have um, such a <laughs> such a, a busy life outside of the game, like I said, because, um, you know, we appreciate that you are out there trying at uh, trying to get better at training every day. But in addition to that, you are putting your time towards uh, helping your community. You, you know, do the coaching that you do, obviously. But not only do you do that coaching, but you turn around and you give even more back from that. So I think that that's, I think that that's part of why you are such a fan favorite lucky, but um, you know, that's, that's just a little editorializing on my part. And, uh, I wanted to say that we will have a link uh, to the book and the app in the description for this podcast. So just keep Thank an you. eye out for that and please do check it out because um, yeah, lucky obviously is uh, one of our, one of our local guys and um, you know, he wants to help out not only uh, the team, but like I just said, and like he just said, the whole community. So, um, Lucky, I think that'll do it for us now. So I, I really appreciate you taking all the time that you did and uh, giving us a bit more background on not just the season, but everything else that you're working on. And, um, yeah, it, it was it was awesome to talk to you. I appreciate it, guys. Take care. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Lucky. Appreciate Cheers. it. Cheers. Bye. Now, Carlos, that was an awesome interview uh, with Lucky. I mean, sure. I, I really enjoyed taking the time to speak with players who, um, you know, they have good stuff to say about actually being a player. You yeah. know, you get your insight there, but he's a lot more than that. And um, I think that that I think that that's also kind of why I said it in the interview. I think that that's why he's one of the fan favorites. It's not just, you know, you can obviously do a lot as a as a player who's out there on the field and, you know, you make your 100 plus appearances as Lucky has now. But he is a coach part time for the Rowdies. He does all of this extra stuff for yeah. Um, everyone in the community here and also for the community back in his home country of Zimbabwe. So um, uh, there, there's a reason that everyone loves Lucky and it's not just his name. Yeah, he's awesome. He's awesome for sure. And I appreciated his uh, his vulnerability and, and transparency with the question about you know, the locker room after that tough loss that we just talked about with, uh, with Charleston. Um, last minute goal obviously takes a toll on, on the guys and um, I appreciated his insight there. And like you said, I mean, it's really cool to hear about what he's doing outside the field, right? Outside of the, the confines of Al Lang uh, Stadium, um, what's going on in his life. Um, really, really cool stuff that he's putting together. Um, I think it's really interesting. He's kind of, um, you know, made it his kind of mission to uh, give advice as much as he can to parents, to coaches. Um, it's, it's pretty cool to see um, what he's doing um, outside of, you know, Al Lang Stadium and, and the training fields he's doing a lot for not only just this local community but like you said um for you know soccer community as a whole and for his country back home in Zimbabwe he's doing really cool stuff so it was a great 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 chance to talk to him today absolutely all right Carlos if you could now let's move into the game that we have been talking about here and there it is the game coming up on Sunday of this week away in San Diego California if you could take it away for us and then we will move into yeah. our last segment where we have another piece of news this is a pretty jam-packed episode yeah San Diego California will play host to your Tampa Bay Rowdies this Sunday uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Dorado Stadium I believe it's the first time we're out there um, ever for a game um i might be wrong um but uh to my knowledge it is uh san diego also have an open cup game the following wednesday so we'll see what their lineup looks like um it's interesting to see kind of what clubs put more importance on the open cup versus what clubs put importance on the league um, or if they try to spread it out evenly we'll have to see how they shape up um they're currently third in the western conference on 11 points after six games very very good start very strong start um, their last five games include only one loss on the season, um, and it's to the current first place team, uh, Sacramento Republic. Uh, they've drawn with Phoenix and New Mexico United, and the rest have been uh, solid wins, um, home wins uh, versus Phoenix and Tulsa, where they seem to be um, kind of a fortress at home. So, going to be a tough one out there in Dorado Stadium. Um, yeah, they also beat Detroit City at home in that first game of the season, not to skip over that game. Uh, they seem to prefer the 3-5-2 formation based on what I've seen, uh, with Stoneman, Adams, and Martin kind of making up that back line uh, unit. 
Moon, Martin, uh, Guido, Corona. Uh, obviously, you know, Joe Corona is a name that everybody might know. I'm a very, very, very experienced player. Um, interesting to see him with this team. Um, and bodily in the midfield with Conway, Collier, um, or uh, James, am I pronouncing this right? Damis, Damis uh, up top um, for this squad. Uh, it's a good looking team. Um, maybe some names you haven't heard of before, but a team that's gelling and firing in all cylinders. Uh, Evan Conway has three goals, uh, while uh, Damis already has two. Uh, shutting down this strong midfield is going to be part of probably the key to the game. Um, definitely look to them to use their full backs um, to get up and create opportunities. Um, Charlie Adams in the midfield has three assists so far on the year. Uh, James is... Uh, Famous tactical previews um, are set to come this week, later this week. Um, yeah, James, obviously a really solid team. It's going to be a tough challenge. I highlighted this game as one to watch during the offseason. Um, it was going to be a great early season challenge. Apparently, a lot of our games have been great early season challenges, but this game will be that um, especially. So um, really good team. It's going to be tough playing over there away, um, all the way in sunny California. What do you think about this game, James? Yeah, um, so obviously this is going to be an away game, as you said. That's going to make things harder immediately because uh, we are – well, I guess we're not doing super great either home or away from home right now, but we are usually better at home, so um, that is something to consider. Uh, I will say with everything, you know, that the Rowdies are doing – and everything that San Diego are doing, if you look at the contrasting fortunes, that's kind of where obviously, you know, most people are going to look immediately. Um, I will break this down a little bit more. I did talk about it a bit in our review. I'm going to talk about it a bit more also in our tactical preview, because uh, I need to get a little bit more info on San Diego where from where I am right now, um, before I want to write all of that out. But I think that um, with us not being able to score, they have, you know, a relatively good uh, back line at the moment. And again, I'll get it more into this with the, um, you know, with the numbers and the tactics and everything in the article. So please check that out. But I would like to see the Rowdies pick up their offensive capabilities. And um, honestly, I, I feel like teams are reluctant to do this. But as a fan, you just kind of you get kind of over it and you're like, um, I want to see the Rowdies whipping across every five minutes. <laughs> you know, it, as, as a team, are you going to do that? Of course you're not going to do that because um, one of the things about soccer is, you know, most of the uh, biggest chances are going to be created through transition moments. So if you're whipping in across every five minutes, then you're going to give away a lot of, uh, you're going to give the ball away a lot of those times. And every time you give the ball away, you are risking a transition chance. So that's why it's not done every friggin' time. But as a Rowdies fan, like I said, you just get frustrated. I want to see him rip it. I want to see him whip it in over and over. I really would like to see us, you know, get just get some more chances out of this game, in all honesty. Otherwise, we're not going to get anything um, one way or another because it's going to be very difficult going out there and trying to make everything work. The only other thing that we have to consider is obviously there's an Open Cup game on Wednesday. And then there is another game on Saturday. So how are the team going to balance all this out? That's something that we need to think about as well. You and I, Carlos, did not take any time to go into the Houston Dynamo game that follows or the Detroit City game that follows that. We're going to do so over the course of this week and next week. It's going to be busy, as I said. But, um, yeah, we've got uh, we've got so many things to take into consideration. I That's where I'm not sure that I feel that this game is probably going to go our way. That's what I would say here is yeah. there is the – offensive output problem and then there's also the problem that we have so many things right now that are kind of like not demotivating factors because that's really reductive but they are negative factors against us versus san diego so um with that all being said carlos uh i've given a lot of preamble here let's do our predicts for this game yeah. for the rblr rowdy's cup standings please tell us what do you think this game well how do you think it'll go yeah i i was you know grabbing my phone on the side really quickly while uh you were giving your thoughts on the game i almost dropped it while clicking on the fop mob like game for this game just to have the stats pulled up 
I'm like, I don't want that to be a bad omen or anything. I almost dropped my phone. But you know what? So many things to consider, like you said. Um, San Diego has a huge game against uh, Seattle Sounders in Seattle uh, that Wednesday. Um, something to consider, like you said. Um, I think I think they'll save some of their uh, you know stronger legs for that game uh, against Seattle. Um, will we save some? I don't. I don't know. I don't even know who our stronger legs are right now. We have a lot of rotation up top. So you know what? I think I'm going to go with a one-one draw. Somewhere in the middle like that is kind of where I'm at. Um, just because there's there's a lot of things at play here. Um, we're not in great form, but it'll click eventually, in my opinion, and I just don't know when that's going to happen. So for now, I'm just going to go with the 1-1 one, one draw. I have no reasoning for it, really. It's it's kind of a gut feeling. Um, I, I'm, I'm probably being optimistic um, based on what I've said about this team and whatever. So I don't know. It's, uh, it'll be interesting. It'll be an interesting game for sure. Yeah, uh, you as well as our producer, Eureka, have set a 1-1 one, one draw. And I will say what our guest spot is. It is my sister, Haley Knowles, at Zelda Selwonk on Twitter. And uh, she has set a 2 on Rowdy's win. So uh, she's feeling positive. like to hear that, obviously. And I would like for it to go that way. I, myself, am going to do the same thing. I broke this down for you last week, Carlos, in probably way too much detail. But um, I'm doing my gut feeling again. And my gut feeling here is not so great. So I'm going to say 3-0 to San Diego. Ouch, but, uh, James. I know. I know we've had some pessimistic predictions in the past, but this one's this one's a little brutal, even for for your standards, James. I I see this. They're they're third in the West, and um, with everything going, like I said, all of those different extra details that we have to take into consideration. That's kind of what's on my head. But it is it is very pessimistic. Let's say if this does come to pass, I would like it to be our lowest point of the season. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> But um, we, are, we yeah. already had a three nothing loss at uh, Charleston, so that's true. Knows. That's true. Um, all right, well, Carlos, let's get into our extra time segment here. We have several things to break down, but the last thing that we need to get to is going to be the biggest news of the night. Even though we had Lucky on here, so uh, can you get us started here on our uh, our milestone performance? Yeah. Aaron Guillen, congratulations to him on his 100th appearance for the Tampa Bay Rowdies, uh, joining a very exclusive club. Um, will be added to that little wall of fame we have in Allen Stadium, I'm sure. Um, awesome, awesome guy, awesome player, a fantastic asset to this club. Uh, yeah, like you said, I'm sure he would have wanted it to go another way. Um, but hey, now we have another chance for another 100th appearance to go a better way with Jan Ecker coming up here. Um, as I said, he made his 99th appearance with the club um, in this past game. So who knows? We'll have a 100th game coming up this Sunday, and hopefully it goes better than the last one. Yeah, and uh, now we will move on to the next point here. So as I said, this is going to be a busy week upcoming with um, three games. Three games. There's – how are we going to – how are we going to do it, Carlos? As a team, how, how, are, how are you and I going to do it uh, with our with our coverage here? We've got, uh, we've got the Sunday game, and we've got the Wednesday game, and we've got the Saturday game. So – um, Carlos, this is something that you and I also tried to take into consideration with the game against Charleston. Are we going to be able to do the, um, are we going to be able to full, a full a field, a full lineup for all three of these games? I'm kind of, I don't know that we are. And if we don't, then whom do we kind of try to not play the reserve team against, but we got, we, we're going to have to spread out minutes here. So if we, if you were in charge, let me ask you this: If you were in charge, would you put all of your force into beating Houston, or would you put all of your force into winning both? Let's say, let's just say Houston or both the USL games to make it easier. I know what I would do, but I want to see what you would do. I, I'm biased to the flashy headlines and, and the nice runs, um, and I know this is this is this has been kind of a debate in Rodney's sort of before. Um, where you put your importance. Um, but I think, it, in my opinion, there should be a little bit more importance placed on the Open Cup because it's an opportunity that doesn't come around that often. No. Um, especially in the way we have it now where it's a home game against Houston Dynamo. Um, like, these opportunities aren't things that happen, you know, oh, we lost this game, but we'll have one next week. You know what I mean? Um, at least in the USL, if we drop another game in um, San Diego, one, it wouldn't be super unexpected. But two, 
we have another chance to make up those points the following week. Um, and again, it's early in the season, so a couple of good wins strung together gets you back to where you were um, or where you want to be. Um, I don't know. So that's my opinion. I can see the other side of that coin as well um, because we're in kind of a tough stretch and there's value in um, putting all your, uh, you know, your marbles in, in that basket to try and string a couple wins together. But then again, like how much more momentum can you ask for if you beat Houston Dynamo at home? In, That's how uh, I feel. Kentucky? So if there's a way to like rally some energy and rally confidence around this team, I feel like it would be uh, with a win against Dynamo. That being said, there is a little bit more risk in putting all your eggs in one basket. And that way, again, obviously a more challenging opponent. Um, what happens if you lose all three games? Um, then you're kind of screwed. I don't know. <laughs> but I think it's worth taking a risk, James, honestly. These opportunities don't come around that often. Um, and, and I think this fan base, this club, has been begging for a special run um, for a really long time. And why not now? Everything that you just said about the Open Cup is exactly how I feel. Um, yeah, the Rowdies do not get to host MLS teams, mostly unless it's preseason. And, you know, those are fun and all, but... Uh, at the end of the day, if you win the what the the Bud Light uh, the Bud Light um, local fencing company uh, local roofing shutters company cup, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even have fake names to give those. Like you know, that's yeah. that's kind of the level we're talking at here. If we can beat them in the Open Cup, that means something. So I am also leaning towards that. But um, yeah, we will do a show about that specifically about the Houston game coming up here. So keep an eye out for that as well as um, the article for our uh, San Diego preview. And there will be an article as well for the uh, preview with uh, the Detroit city game. And I will be doing the open cup website coverage for Houston dynamos open cup game against us too. So um, there will be lots of articles to do <laughs> lots of articles to read lots of podcasts. Mm. Oh man, we got yeah. stuff coming up here, Carlos, but yeah. forget everything I just said. The biggest thing for RBLR sports is not going to be in the month of April, specifically the biggest thing for the RBLR uh, Rowdy show is actually coming up in May. So Carlos, could you take it away from here and we'll, we'll just switch this off until we're, uh, until we're through the whole point, because there's a lot to go through. Yeah. 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 James, I'm excited to put it out there. I know uh, Eureka has been hard at work behind the scenes. Lots of work have been put into this, but the first ever RBLR sports Rowdy's watch party on May 20th versus Rio Grande Valley Doros. Huge, huge, huge opportunity um, to have all the Rowdy's fans come out uh, to uh, Berry House Beer Company in Ebor. It's on the 14th and this street, easily located off the street, off the strip. Sorry. Again, May 20th. Uh, I'm sure we'll put out you know all the information on all our social medias. But again, easily located right next to a bunch of parking spots, walking distance from the trolley stop over there on uh, in Ebor. Um, Berry House Beer Company, award winning beer in multiple styles. Um, yeah. And we'll be doing a fun live pregame show uh, before that game. Uh, so be sure to come and join us before kickoff. Um, and you can, you know, have your say um, and, and be included in that show uh, before we start and, and watch the game together. It should be a blast. Um, it, it's going to be awesome, uh, James. I know I'm excited for that. I'll be back home. That should be like the first week I'm back home. Perfect. Um, so it'll be awesome, awesome time. Um, and it's just a great opportunity to have um, any Rowdy fans in the Tampa area specifically, but obviously all of our um, friends from around the Bay Area are welcome. Um, but it's a really cool opportunity to have some presence in the Tampa area specifically. Um, always seems a bit difficult to organize, but we finally have an opportunity to have um, some Rowdy's presence right in the heart of Ebor. Um, I hope you all can come join us. There's a free swag giveaway, free beer. More details on that later. Um, and RBLR t-shirts to give out. Um, and a ton of uh, pitcher specials uh, to talk about. More info on all of that um, will be put out on the social media. Yeah, like, James, this should be a blast. Um, I, I'm, I'm super excited for it. Um, I'm just really, really excited more than anything to see um, kind of our Rowdies community in the Tampa area uh, show out for this. Um, and a live pregame show. I mean, that's awesome. That'll be cool. And it's just a great opportunity to interact with everybody very directly um, in a fun, laid back, but again, great atmosphere um, with all the Rowdy fans there. So 
should be a blast. So much stuff to give away. So many deals. Uh, Saturday, May 20th, 8 p.m. versus RGV uh, Valley. Should be a blast. This is RGV Valley. It's a Rio Grande Valley. Valley. It doesn't make any sense. You get my point. Yeah, um, I'm, uh, you know, really hyped about this event. I know that, like you said, Eureka has been trying to get this going since pretty much he started this show. And, you know, uh, a lot of that was during COVID that we were kind of cooped up. So there wasn't much ability to put something like this on. And now that there is, I think that taking advantage of uh, the area and kind of giving Tampa uh, an actual watch party because it is Tampa Bay, but, you know, Tampa itself provides a lot of fans. So um, if there's an away game that we can kind of put on a show, I I'm so happy that we are going to have the ability to do that. And um, as you said, there are all of these opportunities for not just free stuff, but uh, markdown beer and all that. Um, I, I will personally say Barry house uh, was very helpful to me in hosting the rehearsal dinner for my wedding. So uh, they, are, you know, a really good place to hang out. Like literally they are a cool venue and um, they have pretty good beer. I will also throw that out there. They have, uh, I, I know that I personally like dark beers. So um, I go a lot of places and I'm like, oh, you know, there are a lot of IPA options here. I would kind of like something a little darker. Well, they also, in addition to the IPA, have a lot of the darker beer options. So, you know, they've got um, all of those good IPAs that everyone kind of really knows Tampa brewery scene for, but they've got a little bit more than that too. So um, that's just my quick little recommendation on Barry house, but yeah, we're going to be talking about this all of the time <laughs> up until May 20th. Um, it's coming out now because it's roughly a month out, but you will definitely hear about it some more. So if you can uh, get people involved, please invite them not only, you know, to help RBLR sports, but um, let's just, get watch parties going for the rowdies. Uh, if this is a thing that's in your life, like it is in my life and Carlos's life now in Eureka's life, you know, we're all pretty regularly involved as opposed to, um, you know, some of us, uh, before myself, like I wanted to, um, you know, start going to more of these games. And this is a way that I kind of forced myself into it. Carlos, you were, uh, always, you know, going to rowdies games beforehand. So you are, the dedicated long-term fan here, but let's make long-term and dedicated fans out of everybody. Even people that usually don't go to see Rowdy's games or Rowdy's events. Um, that is kind of my, my goal personally with these is to say like, you know, if you know anybody who uh, just likes a watch party, then probably they will enjoy coming and seeing the Rowdy's as a watch party and then maybe get a little hooked on both of them. So that's, that's where we're all leaning towards, but um, yeah, that'll do it for us now tonight. Uh, we went long Carlos, but I think it was worth it. You know, we had to break down the Charleston game. Not super fun. We had to have an interview with Lucky. Absolutely super fun. <laughs> we did our preview of uh, the San Diego game. And we also did a preview for the events that we have been trying to put together for so long now. So, yeah, definitely worth it from my perspective to ensure that everything that needs to be included actually is in this show. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I mean, I don't know. I had a great time recording this episode. I know um, that game against Charleston wasn't a blast, but I think there's value in, in talking about it, talking through it, talking through what happened. Um, and I think we covered everything we wanted to. And free stuff on May 20th. Like, who doesn't want free stuff? Um, it should be a blast, and I'm just really excited for it. All right. Well, that now will do it. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And thank you for sticking with us so long. As I said, I know we went long, but we did cover everything under the sun that was uh, available to us. So uh, please follow RBLR Sports on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at RBLR Sports. I am also on Twitter at RBLR James K. And what about you, Carlos? At Carlos GPA 10 on Twitter. Um, it's tweeting a lot about Ecuador U17s. They just qualified to uh, the U17 World Cup. Uh, after we won with Brazil yesterday, 2-2. Super great game. Um, really, really good talent coming out of there, out of all the U-17s in South America. Um, yeah, I'm always tweeting about the rallies. Obviously, feel free to shoot James or I questions with hashtag AskRVLR. Always, always excited to um, include those questions in these episodes. Absolutely. And please like and subscribe to our podcast, of course. If you've gotten this far, I assume you have. But if you haven't, make sure you do. We are uh, at RBLR Sports and we are on YouTube. If you want to get the full experience, you can see not only 
the interview with uh, us, you know, every single week, but also with Lucky and Kosana. So that's pretty cool. And we are on Spotify, the iHeartRadio app. We are on Apple and Google Podcasts. We are everywhere that podcasts are. So for a jam-packed week, ahead of one more jam-packed week, come <laughs> on, you rowdies. Thank you for tuning into this presentation by RBLR Sports. On your way out of the stadium, please remember to like and subscribe.